Sings, mm-hmm. boy, boy. what do you mm-hmm. think that is? They're worshiping, mm-hmm. boy, boy. Mm-hmm. Canary. Mm-hmm. There are different parts. Okay, so mm-hmm. your own dance. The one that is... makes it complete for God mm-hmm. is the people that can dance, the mm-hmm. people that can't dance, the people can almost dance, the one who can almost not dance, yes. everybody together. It's called mm-hmm. harmony. Hallelujah, all to the glory of God. Mm. Don't Go past the now, while you are doing this, huh? <laughs> every enemy. Every enemy. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to uh, uh, Explore the Word. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Tabella, you're welcome. Cool, yeah. Okay. I, I, hope, I hope you join up with okay. that. Okay, he said Gospel Shaku. Hallelujah. Gospel Shaku. <laughs> shaku. Okay, Shaku is not good though. Uh, it's shaku. not Shaku. It's just Pastor Dory. Which one is Shaku? It's a It's a dance. All right, <laughs> I'm a spiritual man. I don't know that. Amen. It doesn't mean you're not spiritual, my brother or sister. He's a brother, I will not A sister, I have to explain. It doesn't mean you're not spiritual. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. So that you understand as well. Yes. yes, let's just start with a word of prayer. And so, our Father, we're just so thankful. Thank you, Lord, that we can laugh. Thank you, Lord, that we can rejoice in you because we know that you're on our side. We want to thank you for this privilege to gather together to. Have, hear your word and to have you minister to us. We ask in the name of Jesus that tonight shall be a night of transformation. Yes. Let your name be glorified for the awesome things we know that you will do that will be permanent in every life. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Two ideas, <laughs> Don't forget. It's your cutting. 
Hmm? Yes, setting apart. Don't, don't, yeah, exactly. yes. To the person asunder of oh, soul and spirit, Hallelujah. bones and marrow, is a designer yes. of the intent of the heart of men. As you are doing this, mm -hmm. word of knowledge will start coming. Hallelujah. What's going on in the heart of your enemies <laughs> <laughs> against you? <laughs> Hallelujah. We welcome you so much. Oh, oh, thank you, Peculiar. Happy belated birthday. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tonight is a very interesting topic. Yes. Um, yes. Are you willing to pay the price? It's a question, really, that every one of us needs to answer. You know, are you willing to pay the price? That is the topic for today. You need to get your Bibles and your pens and your paper because there's so much we're going to read. Full dose today, today, man. You don't want to and miss this. And today is really going to be very, very practical. So you need to actually have your notebooks or your iPads or whatever, your phones or what have you. You know, oh, Kenny so said, break the shackles off my feet. So yes, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Don't forget, we make a miracle, miracle walk. Walk. promise, keep oh, yeah. light in the darkness. Yes. That is who you are. It shows that you can only dance for your hey, but it's fine. We make a two edged yes, sword. Do it. <laughs> two edged sword. So, our text for today is Acts 16 25 and Matthew. 25 6. I'm your assistant today. Just tell me what you want me to do. As always, done. And I'll do. And then who the chapter number 16. Acts number 16. And verse number 25. 25. And then Matthew 25 6. <laughs> There's going to be noise in the prison. You Amen. know, I was writing a message noise Amen. in the prison sometimes. The text was chapter 16, the Lord Amen. chapter 16. But, uh, noise in the prison. Hallelujah. 16 verse 25. 25 yes. And I'll read, but at midnight, Amen. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Amen. And the prisoners were listening to them. Hallelujah. And the prisoners were listening, were listening to, them. to them. The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying mm -hmm. and they were singing. Yeah. And the prisoners were listening. Yeah, were listening, were listening to, them. to them. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, all of us, I'm sure, we must have heard about the scripture one time or the other about Paul and Silas in the prison. But the Bible says something at midnight. And one thing about the Bible is that the Bible is not flippant. God mm. is not flippant. Mm. He doesn't just use words for the sake of using words. Mm. Every word in scripture has a meaning. Mm. I know you always say that thing. Sometimes when we're reading scripture, I say, even the commas and the punctuation marks have a, have a meaning. It's deliberate. It's intentional. Mm. So every word in scripture is intentional. It's something that we need to discern. God wants us to glean from it. Right. So the Bible is saying that at midnight, it could easily have said at night time. Yeah. It, could, it, could, it could easily have said later on in the day or whatever. Right. But the fact that the Bible was precise about letting us know exactly what time the praise and the prayer took place. And it's something that we ought to learn. Mm. And when you look at this, how is it that and Paul and Silas were able to pray and to sing praises unto God and not just ordinary praise and worship mm -hmm. but such that it was so loud it was so intense that the prisoners heard now we need to understand if we go to the preceding verses because of time we might not be able to read the preceding verses in that Acts 16 mm -hmm. yeah. the Bible says that yeah. they were arrested yeah. the Bible says that they were brought before the magistrate why? Because they delivered a girl. God was, used them to set somebody free. Set so. so they were doing God's work. <laughs> and they were punished for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, that's another sermon, sweetheart. It's part of the uh, noise in the prison. Mm -hmm. Another day. So they were, they were, they delivered a girl who had, we were using the spirit of divination mm. to prophesy. Mm. You know, I'm going to, that's another sermon again, because even though she was saying the right thing, but it was from the wrong spirit. Mm. She was saying that they were men of God and, and all that mm. and everything. But the Bible says she had been following them for many days. And after a while, Paul just couldn't stand it. And he delivered her. And the Bible says that his, her owners were upset because they couldn't make money mm. from her anymore. Mm. So they took them before the magistrate. They stripped them naked. They lied on them. They beat them. The Bible says that stripes were all over them. So that means that they were for beating, doing the right thing. For doing the right thing. And then they were now shackled. And the Bible says that when he told them the jailer, yeah. he said that he should he should put them in the innermost. Another um, version says in the innermost prison. Right. Another version says in the dungeon. dungeon yeah. So they were not just in an ordinary prison; they were like in the worst part of the prison. And you don't have echoes in the dungeon hmm. because there is no air. You know, echo is works with air. Mm -hmm. There is no air in the dungeon. Mm. So if they were singing and the other prisoners heard them. Mm -hmm. That was loud praise, man. That was loud praise. <laughs> that was loud praise. That was loud, intense praise. Uh, that was loud, intense praise. Hallelujah. Yes, man. 
And so the Bible says, and they were shackled again. I was reading, I think it was a message, that the way they were shackled, it was very, very impossible for them to sleep well yeah. or to stand well. Right. So they were, it was, everything was uncomfortable, a comfortable environment, a comfortable situation. Their body was uncomfortable, but yet they were able to praise and pray at midnight. Wow. So when we're talking about midnight tonight, we're not talking about the chronological midnight. Yeah, okay. We're not saying 12 midnight in the night. In the night. So we're not saying every 12 Please, midnight. Please, hear it so that you go and start praying only at midnight. This is not, not only midnight prayer that God hears. Prayer is prayer. Anytime God hears, okay? So please, there's nothing special about midnight. All right, then. So that, yes. So we're not talking about the chronological midnight. We're mm. talking about midnight symbolically. Mm. So the Bible says that at midnight. So now we now began to ponder, how was it that they were able to praise God and to pray, even with all the prevailing circumstances, with the fact that they were in pain, with the fact that you know people had lied at them, with the fact that they weren't comfortable? Mm. How were they able to still praise God mm. and pray? At the midnight. Now, the meaning of midnight, the normal meaning of midnight is like the darkest. Please, make sure you like and share. Fran, tonight, it's, I'm serious. This woman is pregnant with something heavy. And I'm not exaggerating, please. Um, it's something you need to hear. And like I said, I'm just tagging along here. All right? I want her to point out the way the Lord has put it in our spirit. It's a word you need to hear, sincerely. So please like and share. And everyone, especially women, especially women, I, I, I have a reason why I'm saying that, but especially you have a friend around, a sister around, a woman, some woman, especially women, but everybody, every human being needs to hear this. I heard it and I was very blessed and you will be blessed, please. So make sure you're sharing, all right? God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah, see that. Yes. Sorry to so, you. No, no, darling. So um, midnight means the darkest time of the night. Midnight is the time between the, the, the day before and the day after. So it's the mm. it's like a crossroad between today mm. and tomorrow. It's mm. when night meets day. It's the end of today and the beginning of tomorrow. But it is the darkest time of the night. And usually at midnight, nothing is really happening. Everybody is mm. expected to be sleeping. Everybody is expected to be inactive. Mm -hmm. There's no office open yeah. at night. Yeah. And even a lot of times they say that when you when you check out the times that security men yeah. sleep. It's usually at midnight. midnight. They catch you, <laughs> you know, at midnight. You know, yeah. and in scripture, the word midnight was used fourteen times, eight wow. times in the Old Testament and six times in the New Testament. Wow. But you know, something I found out, sweetheart, mm -hmm. is that every time the word midnight was used in scripture, yeah. there was an action. Something wow. always took place. Wow. The word midnight was never used in scripture without something actually happening. happening. The Bible says in the Book of Ex Exodus eleven verse 4 and also Exodus 12 yeah. 29 yeah. when God was talking about the fact that at midnight yeah. he was going to come into the land of Egypt come on. and he was going to destroy all the firstborn there is the always an action at midnight there is always an action at midnight even though physically there is, it looks like there is no activity mm -hmm. hmm. go ahead man the Bible talks about um, Samson yeah. in Judges chapter 16 verse 3 yeah. when his enemies had laid seed all around him and yeah. they thought they would kill him yeah. the Bible says he laid yeah. until midnight and then he arose at midnight My and God. he carried the gates of the city on his mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. and he took it up onto the hill. Wow. At midnight, something the Bible talks about Ruth in the, in the book of Ruth, chapter yeah. 3, verse 8. Yeah. The Bible says at midnight she went and she uncovered, you know, um, Boaz and she covered herself with Boaz. Yeah. She made her intentions known to Boaz at mm -hmm. midnight. Mm -hmm. So every time that scripture talks about midnight, there's always an action. An action. In Psalm 119, verse 62, yeah. the Bible says, At midnight I will rise and give thanks unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. So at midnight, even though it is the darkest time, even though it is the time whereby everything seems horrible, yeah. whereby maybe, you know, at a point in time in your life, maybe you suffered a loss, mm -hmm. a loss of a child, a loss yeah. of a husband, a loss of your job, yeah. a loss of your livelihood, a loss of peace or whatever. Yeah. When it seems as if all hell has just been unleashed upon you, mm. God expects you to yeah. do something yeah. at that time. Right. So every time the word midnight is used, we're not talking about, like we said again, I'm repeating it, we're not talking about chronological. Mm. We're talking about the symbolism of midnight. Mm. God expects you to do something. Every time he's using scripture, an action takes place, mm. you know. And you know something, darling, yeah. at midnight, why God expects us to also do something is yeah. because the devil too does not sleep at midnight. Uh, 
Uh, not midnight, 12 We're midnight. We're not talking of 12 midnight. Yeah. Now, there is a midnight oh, period in every, in, 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 in our life. life. Yeah. Yeah. Usually midnight, if I can yes, help buttress what you're saying, midnight is the period where there is an ending of it, a, a, a past and a beginning of a new. Yes. It's, it's almost, it's almost twilight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where one is ending and another is beginning. And it's very interesting because mm -hmm. for, as far as it's concerned, there are some things in your life it doesn't want to end. Yes. So it wants um, um, midnight to be perpetual. It must not come. For some other things, he, 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 he can't stop the ones he doesn't want to stop. Mm -hmm. Probably stops. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want another one to begin. Mm -hmm. So whichever way, in two ways, he wants to extend midnight. Yes. So that whenever you get into your midnight, you something doesn't begin or something doesn't end. You know what the Bible says, but you're talking now. The Bible yeah. says, weeping may endure for a night, joy. but joy comes in the morning. Correct. So the Bible lets us understand what happens at night, mm. what happens in the, morning, in the morning, but doesn't tell us what happens at midnight. midnight. So for me, I believe that what you use, what you do at midnight will determine whether there's a breath of the morning Thank you, darling. or there's an ending of the night. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So, but God expects us mm. to do something at midnight. midnight. So we now begin to look at how was it that Paul and Silas were able to take charge of their midnight? Mm. How is it that they were able to allow joy to prevail so over their So if somebody is asking a question and say, Pastor Bola, I, I understand this. I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done everything I ought to do, but this season is not going off. In other words, the night is not ending. Okay? Um, I'm not entering into my morning. So it simply means the person is feeling at midnight. So... I'm, I'm just trying to yes, know the, I'm, the person yes, is feeling yes, at midnight. Yes. So this is going to answer some questions. Yes. Pastor, I've fasted, I've prayed, I've sown seed, I've done everything I ought to do. This situation is not changing. Please stay tuned. I share to as many people as possible. There is a key here that is missing, and that's the key that this great woman of God is going to give <laughs> us today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And also another symbolism of midnight is that it's the time of the unexpected. Hmm. Hmm. Now we've opened our Bible to the second um, scripture that we have for tonight, Matthew yeah. chapter 25, sweetheart. Right. Matthew chapter 25, 25 yes. if we read from verse 1, please, from so that we can one. have full understanding okay. of that passage. Yes, ma'am. Matthew 25, yes. Then. From verse 1, yes. where do you want to stop? Um, we can just go into about verse 10. 10, thank you. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Yeah. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. Wow. So five remained in the night, only five entered the morning. Mm -hmm. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with it. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be foolish. Exactly. You have a lamp, it for us. you have oil, but you don't have no oil with it. You, mm -hmm. They took their lamps and took no oil with them mm -hmm. but the wise took oil with their vessels uh, took oil in their vessels with their lamps mm -hmm. but when the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept mm -hmm. all of them slept mm -hmm. wise and foolish ones slept mm -hmm. and at midnight mm -hmm. a cry like mm -hmm. you said that always an action at midnight mm -hmm. a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him mm -hmm. then all those virgins arose mm -hmm. foolish and the wise one mm -hmm. and trained their lamps mm -hmm. and the foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out mm -hmm. this is what makes us know that all the lamps add oil mm -hmm. okay because mm -hmm. if you just read what is going there mm -hmm. it's going out simply mm -hmm. means our mm -hmm. oil is running out. So mm -hmm. all the lamps add oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. They just didn't have the extra. extra. Okay. Now verse number nine says, But the wise answered saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather. In other words, I can love you, but I can't bear your burdens. <laughs> but go rather to those who sell mm -hmm. and buy for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready... Mm. Those who were ready. Ready means you must have extra. <laughs> Went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Was shut. Jesus. Jesus. So it's not enough for you um, at midnight to wow. be a virgin. 
It's not enough for you to have the lamp. What does it mean to be a virgin? It's, what does it mean to have the you, lamp? For you to be a virgin means that you're a born again child of God. Hallelujah. Washed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. That makes you pure. That makes you clean. That's that why all things have passed away. Yes. I and mean, all, all things, things have become new. A virgin is one that is not yet. Not yet defiled. Defiled. So not not yet. It's um, pure. Yeah. Um, everything, whatever you might have done, the it's moment the you way it is Christ. default, like at creation. So when you get born again, you are at default at creation. A brand You've never new done creature. anything wrong before. Please don't forget that. Yes, please. It's a new slate, a yeah. new book, yeah. new chapter of your life. Yeah. And the Bible says that they were all turned virgins. So that means that they were all born again children of God. Okay. They were all saved. Right. They had all given their lives to Christ. Yeah. They all had the word because the lamp is the word. Okay. You know, the Bible says that that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Okay. So these were Christians so, who were also studying the scriptures bible believing the, christians bible believing christians the 10 of them the 10 of them the 10 of them please take and, note of that and, the, and like you said in when you raised that um, in that verse yeah. they all had oil so the oil is the holy spirit the oil is the holy spirit so mm. you need the holy spirit mm. to cause the word of god to illuminate your life and that is why there are people that when wow. they read the please, word could you say that again okay you need the holy spirit yeah to reveal the word of God to you so yeah. that it can illuminate your life. Wow. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive the revelation of the word of God. And that is why there are a lot of people that when they study the Bible, the Bible is just like a storybook to them mm. because they don't have understanding. Remember the story of the eunuch who was reading the, the Bible. I'd read. And, you know, he had read it, but he didn't have understanding yeah. because he couldn't, it, 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 it was just, and until Philip came, yeah. and he asked a question, he said, how can I know when there's nobody to explain to, to, explain to him because he lacked the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, and that is why we need the Holy Spirit to illuminate. And that is what we do here on Explore the Word. We want us to begin to have a love for the study of the Bible. Hallelujah. And the more you study the Bible, yeah. asking the Holy Ghost to illuminate you. So illuminate your heart so that when you read it, he begins to open new things unto you. Yeah. You know, like this scripture, I mean, I've read it over and over again, yeah. but I've never seen, you know, the point. And every time when we read scripture, it happens like that all yeah. the time. Yeah. One of the uh, grace pastimes that my husband and I always do is whenever we read something, I get a new rema. I mean, we can't wait to tell each other. Mm -hmm. Like, ah, I just mm -hmm. saw this new thing. Did you see this? Did you mm -hmm. see that? Did you see that? And that's what the Holy Ghost does. So they had the, the oil. So the wise ones had the oil in the lamp, which was sufficient for that time. But they also had extra. Yeah. Because remember, they told them the bridegroom was coming, but they didn't tell them the time. Come on. And that's why the Bible says at midnight. At midnight is that it's not telling us that Jesus is coming at midnight of a particular day. Because the Bible says we do not know the hour of his coming. Yeah. But it's telling us that at an unexpected time, that's what the Bible says, he will come like a thief in the night. Mm. We do not know the hour nor the day when he's coming. Yeah. But at an unexpected time, mm. there would be a cry that the bridegroom is coming. Yeah. And that is why we must be ready. It says only those that were ready entered in. Yeah. But what does, what does it mean to be ready when you have the extra oil? It's the extra oil that makes you ready. To react, to do that which you ought to do at the unexpected time mm. at midnight. Mm. So what Paul and Silas had that was able to make them respond the way they responded at the midnight hour was that they had extra. Hmm. So now we need to go into it so that we could help our, our our audience. If Paul and Silas did not have extra, they just had a lamb like the foolish virgins, yes. what, what, what would have been their response to the predicament they found themselves? Like, so that at least everybody can identify themselves with um, one of them. But when, am I foolish or am I wise? You know. Now, now the thing is, remember from, from where we read now, yeah. after a while, the oil will run out. Now when your oil runs out, so what are the things that makes our natural oil run out? Yes. Um, the oil we have. Yeah, yeah, I'm what? still trying to answer the first. Okay, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just stressed yes. that it will help the listeners resonate with what you're saying. Yes. So the thing is, your oil will run out. And so once your oil runs out, when you do not have that extra grace, that anointing, that uh, presence, you begin to complain. Mm. You begin to murmur. Mm. The reality of your situation is overwhelms you so if i 
I find myself in situations where um, probably I've just done something for God, and rather than the, the blessings uh, that uh, I mean, I think she follow it. Yes. I'm receiving lashings and imprisonments and pain and like hell breaks loose over me. Yes. If I complain, uh, I like what. I like the extra, extra oil. oil. Awesome. One thing I found out is that awesome. the, the midnight hour is a determinant of what kind of Christian you are. It actually separates the wheat from the shaft. Yes. Hallelujah. Because it was at the midnight hour that we knew. Because when we saw the virgins mm -hmm. before the midnight, they were all on the same platform. They were all virgins. They were all virgins. I, we, I, we didn't know who was foolish or who was wise. Mm, until when the uh, bride cried, the, midnight came. Until circumstances yes. tried them. Yes. So adversity is the true test of a man's quality. Yes. Adversity, hashtag. Adversity is the true test of a man's quality. Yes. Okay, so it's like you can't, we, we, can't, we don't know the kind of Christian you are no. yet. Until when you, challenges until come. When challenges come. <laughs> is you don't know whether God is good. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. God is good. Even, even unbelievers know God is good. <laughs> when everything is good. Okay, adversity is the true test of a man's quality. All right, so when you've not faced challenges, when the storms have not come, when I mean, you see Peter, you think Peter was strong, blah blah blah. But when Peter saw storm, mm -hmm. and blah, if he was trying to prove much, we didn't cry later. And I said, ah, God, what is it? Come, so you don't care that we perish. <laughs> and Jesus was right with them. Do you know they didn't even think that probably Jesus too was going to die? <laughs> and so all they do is that they don't care that we perish, okay. That's adversity. You just show, show the kind of quality that Peter too, also thought he was strong until adversity came and he denied Jesus three times. You know, but God did not give up on that. Mm -hmm. Now the Holy Ghost now showed up and began to have extra. Please go ahead. I just need to help you help um, butter that point. How awesome, awesome. And, and that is why it is very important that we have extra because midnight will come for everybody. Mm. As sure as the Bible says, the night. And the morning where the first day there will always be a midnight in everybody's life everybody will go through the midnight but the only thing that will assure you that you would overcome that midnight hour and it would not prevail is the extra that you have and when we're looking at the characteristics of the foolish you mean we're trying to say okay about the foolish um one of the things this the bible made us to understand and defined them is that they took no oil with excuse them me. i would have to excuse myself a okay bit. please go ahead to that Excuse is that me. they took no oil with them so the fact that they took no oil with them now what does it mean that when you don't take any oil why, why is that you take any oil with them number one they were lazy how you know a foolish virgin how you know a foolish christian how you know a christian that doesn't have extra oil is a christian that is lazy a christian that is slothful a christian that does not want to go the extra mile to do extra for for the things of the kingdom you're not willing to to pray extra you're not willing to you know study the word extra you're not willing, willing to pay sacrifice for the kingdom number two they did not have constant fellowship with god because when you constantly fellowship with god you would receive extra oil you will receive from the presence of god when you dwell the more the more you dwell in the presence of god the more of god will be rubbed off on you the bible says when moses went up to the mountain to fellowship with the father the bible says that by the time he came down after 40 days scripture said that they could not behold his face because what had happened the glow from the father the presence of god had come upon him that he had to have a veil on his face there is no way you can spend quality time quality fellowship in the presence of god that god does not rub off on you so you get the extra number three they did not plan ahead christians that are foolish virgins that are foolish are christians that don't plan ahead they don't think of any eventuality now because the bridegroom says come he didn't tell them the time that he was coming. And a lot of us right now, in this present day and age, because of the way things are going, we're not planning ahead. We're not, we're not, we're not thinking about the fear. And, and you know, because now it is very rare for, for us to hear preaching in church, you know, yeah. about the end of time, you know, about the coming of the Lord. So many people are not even planning. They're not preparing for the mm -hmm. second coming of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the lazy Christians are people that don't plan ahead. Fourthly, these are Christians that are not ready to sacrifice. Now you see what the wise virgins told them. Said, "Look, go and buy your own oil." These are Christians that will come and meet pastor and say, "Lay hands on me. All the anointing that you have, give it to me." 
Meanwhile, pastor that you want him to lay hands did not get that anointing by just somebody laying hands. That anointing came by fasting. That anointing came by praying. That anointing came by by a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, so these are Christians that just want things to be given to them. Just give it to me. Mm. You know, let me like this. Um, what was that man that said? Told them, Paul and Peter that he wanted to buy the anointing when yes, I can't remember his yes, name again. Yes. You know, these are Christians that want to do things their way and Simon. not God's way. They are not ready to pay the price. They're not ready to forego materialism. Mm. They're not ready to forego. I'm just talking about the characteristics yeah. of yeah. the foolish yeah. virgins. Yeah. Do you want to continue? No, please go ahead. So, um, how then can we have the extra, which is the core, crux of the matter? Mm. How can I ensure that when it is the midnight, because the midnight will come. I'm not predicting doom. I'm not saying that um, I'm not prophesying it's evil standard. Food, but it is standard because the Bible it's says we will pass through tribulations and trials. Even the Bible says the evening and the morning were the first day. A day consists consists of light and darkness. It's, it's, it's the way God has created it. Nothing changes that. Amen. Please mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. So how can I have the extra? How can I joy prevail in my life above circumstances? Mm. I mean, how can I laugh at the face of trouble? Mm. You know, how can we? And God expects us to laugh. In the scripture that says in, in, in Psalm 2, yeah. he says, um, those that sit, they will, he will laugh, laugh at them. At them. His place, yeah. You know, yeah. and God, because we're seated with him, therefore, mm -hmm. we should laugh we at should the enemy. Laugh, yeah. Anytime the enemy is trying to throw things at us and try to, you know, I was, I was counseling somebody um, recently right. and she was telling me of all the challenges and all that that she was going through and everything and I told her, I said, tell the devil not today. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's broken English, but I'm just trying to say that, is it today that God has been defeating you, has been putting you to shame, yeah. has been distressing you? Yeah. So even in this situation, I know that my God is going to put you to shame. So mm -hmm. laugh and refuse to be overwhelmed by, so one, how do I get extra? Yeah, someone just asked, um, everyone, everyone asked a question, how do you get extra oil? Very good. Before you go to our stream, how do you get extra oil? Um, Proverbs says, if you faint the day of adversity, little is your, is your strength. Now, it, it simply means, day of adversity is a standard. It will come. To everybody. That's day of adversity is midnight. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, it says, how you respond to your midnight mm -hmm. uh, will determine if you fail at that time of the midnight, mm -hmm. which is the time of adversity. Mm -hmm. That was your strength. In other mm -hmm. words, you don't have sufficient oil. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, because the truth is this, time, uh, time is going to try you. Okay? And it was because time tried these folks. It was mm -hmm. time that separated both of them. Mm -hmm. Because they don't forget, they came to meet the bride. If the bride might come early, who knows what was we foolish. Mm -hmm. But you see, if the promise comes to us all the time, when we all, we all well, expect, we expect it, it, then we will not know who is wise or foolish. Mm. We will not know whether you have extra oil or you don't. You don't. Okay? So it is when you, pray, you wait and you pray, <laughs> and the promise is starting, we now begin to know whether you are wise or unwise. Let me not use foolish. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Whether you have extra oil or mm. not, or whether your strength is little. Mm. So it is actually the oil that brings that determines your strength. Mm -hmm. We all have the lamp. Mm -hmm. The lamp is standard to all of us. The mm -hmm. difference in what we carry, don't forget, everyone has lamp. The other one has extra oil. There's no need for extra lamp here. The word is the word. Mm -hmm. but, okay, see, but there are levels of the anointing. Mm -hmm. There are levels of grace. Mm -hmm. And those are the things you build at the time when... Let me not rent you. So, so the Bible is just saying here mm -hmm. that if... You faint the day of adversity. Your strength is little. Same thing we have read. Now, while Paul and Silas were able to sing, when sincerely they should be mourning, but God, I went for you. Mm -mm. But God, I came here for you. Mm -hmm. God, I, 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 I did not come here. I'm not looking for money. Mm -hmm. I came to preach. Mm -hmm. Look at all. Look at my back. Look at my, you know, they would, that will have shown. Mm -hmm. Though they have their heart to do the right thing, mm -hmm. yet their own strength is little. Mm -hmm. Now, we can always move together when there is a corporate anointing. Yes. In other it's words, easier. you add my strength to your strength and yes. blah, 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 and prayer of agreement. But then God will bring circumstances mm -hmm. your way that will require your own strength. Yes. Okay? Yes. You, you, there is a, you will face a Goliath. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it mm -hmm. or not, mm -hmm. it is standard. Mm -hmm. Now, Goliath is not meant to be a deterrent from you moving forward. Mm -hmm. Goliath in God's own agenda mm -hmm. is actually meant to be that thing that will introduce you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. for a higher platform. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Like mm -hmm. he, go, he was glad was David's introduction mm -hmm. to the entire nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. There's something that's meant to throw you to the higher realm. Mm -hmm. But a lot of Goliaths have been withstanding on because our strength it's is little. little. Mm. It's little. Mm -hmm. When we seem to be losing, when things are not just going the way we want. Mm -hmm. But I would not sit down to look at what the Bible says, how the Bible says, the Bible did not promise you um, that there will be no trouble. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, it was God that Jesus himself that said it. Mm -hmm. He says, in me you have peace. Mm -hmm. In the world. He didn't say you have peace in the mm -hmm. world. He said, in me mm -hmm. you will have peace. Mm -hmm. In the world you have tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's John that you in the you have tribulation. Mm -hmm. We now say be of good cheer. In other words, if you are not able to cheer up in your adversity, mm -hmm. in your tribulation, mm -hmm. you can't enjoy my peace. Mm -hmm. What brings your peace mm -hmm. at that time is your response to the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, if you are looking for peace in your circumstance, mm -hmm. peace on this earth, peace on what you have and what you don't have. Mm -hmm. Uh, you will always have pain mm -hmm. because this world will offer you no peace mm -hmm. your peace is only in Christ Jesus now peace is not the absence of trouble mm -hmm. peace is simply um, the the tranquility of heaven mm -hmm. okay ability to to have control when you should lose control mm -hmm. Hmm. Ability to have control when you should lose control. control. That's peace. Hmm. That is peace. When when you're in trouble, you cry, you panic, you say things you don't mean. You you are you 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 are you are disgruntled. But when you have peace, mm, you, you you kind of you are a bit detached from the circumstance as it were. So you are looking at it. Why are thou so downcast, oh my soul? So rather than talk to, talking and complaining to God, David was talking to himself. Mm -hmm. He has control. Because mm -hmm. what the devil wants is this, cause God and die. Yes, like Job's wife said. Uh -huh. Rather than Job talking mm -hmm. to, uh, Job was talking to himself. He said all of my appointed days. I wait. He was so low quiet. Mm -hmm. That's when you have control. Okay, the devil wants me to talk to this person. No, mm -hmm. I will talk to me. Mm -hmm. When we talk against him. That's peace. That's peace. Mm -hmm. Please go ahead, man. Mm -hmm. When, when, when you were talking, I just remember the scripture in, in the book of Exodus. I'm trying to hashtag ladies and gentlemen. And, um, I'm in charge. Hallelujah. Peace means you are in charge. You're in charge. You're in charge. Peace You're means I'm in charge. Um, in charge. Yes. Don't because I know that God is in charge. The moment, mm -hmm. the moment mm -hmm. you you lose control and start complaining mm -hmm. and making God feel as though He's not a faithful God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you are no longer in control. Mm -hmm. Anything and any situation that makes you mm. doubt God's faithfulness mm. has taken control from you. Mm. This scripture, when we were talking now, yeah. it says, but against any of the children of Israel. Mm. Okay, this was God when he was talking, when he said he was going to kill all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says in verse 7, he says, but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference mm. between the Egyptians and Israel. What am I saying? There's always a difference at midnight hour between the wise and the foolish. And the foolish. And the foolish. Now, the foolish always just behave like unbelievers. Yes. But now they don't think they can. Mm -hmm. They love God because now everything they're asking God, mm -hmm. at least 90% is doing. He's doing it. Uh -huh. But when 90% reduces to 5%, everything breaks down. Everything breaks down. Then you, you, their tongue, uh, and you know, it's this tongue, this same mm -hmm. tongue. So it's more like, God, what have I done? So it's either they've done something wrong or God has, has done something wrong or the devil is too powerful for God to handle. And that's why you see some people that would go back to the world. Yes. Feel and some still attend church, but they have gone back to the world. They still attend church, but they have gone back. I mean, or how would you explain that a woman, because of financial pressures, maybe her husband is not irresponsible? We have a lot of that today. Her husband has lost her job and things. She is having to sleep with somebody else because they have to get contract, and she's getting ahead with with all that. And she's still in church. And I excuse is God, but you see my plight. No, 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 no. You just failed in time of adversity. Hmm. 
midnight. Adversity. You see, Christianity does not mean the, the Christianity does not expunge you from pain. Does not expunge you from challenges. No, 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 no. Oh. See, like, it's, besides the challenges, challenges happen to life, but pain, and that's what we don't want to hear anymore. No, the Bible says unto us is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, Philippians one, that's twenty nine, but also to suffer for His sake. There is pain in this work. There is pain in this work. I was telling them, I said, I think I was preaching somewhere and I was explaining about the name of Jesus. You know, Peter, Paul and um, Peter, mm -hmm. when they preached on, on, uh, on the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. and then, then after that, they went and raised this guy that was crippled, uh, mm -hmm. chapter, uh, chapter 3. Mm -hmm. They now arrested them. Mm -hmm. They now said, okay, since they saw them, they saw that they were illiterate. Mm -hmm. They now said, they must be using an authority that is beyond because these mm -hmm. guys are illiterate. So in whose name mm -hmm. uh, uh, have you done this? Mm -hmm. They now said, in the name of Jesus. Okay, now the name of Jesus was powerful enough mm -hmm. to give a limbs, mm -hmm. limbs to a man that was born crippled, mm -hmm. almost 40 year old. Mm -hmm. hmm? Limbs. That was immediately was jumping mm -hmm. and praising God and jumping for joy. Now, but that power, that name of Jesus did not stop them from being arrested, arrested, beaten, and imprisoned. Mm -hmm. But the name of Jesus went to show up again when they were in prison. Mm -hmm. Angels went to release them again to go and preach. <laughs> And they arrested them again. Mm -hmm. So you should know these dynamics. God did not promise you a life without troubles. Mm -hmm. In me, we have peace. Please keep preaching. Mm -hmm. Let me find that scripture in the book of John. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So um, midnight would definitely show the kind of Christian that you are, and it would actually test whether it is just um, you're just being theoretical, <laughs> or it is really that you know you have that. Um, you are a true child of God and, mm. and you are wise. So number one, how can we have the extra oil? Number one, you must be a seeker of his face and not his hand. Yo, Oh, you know, you finished. <laughs> For me, that's the bottom line. Bottom line. Now, a lot of people seek God now for his hand. Lord, mm. bless gini, me. Gini, gini. Help me. Sincerely, they don't even want to. They want to love God too. But mm. you see, it's more of the fact that they are more consumed about here. Existence here than their relevance there. Okay, they live on the earth, but they don't rule the earth from heaven. Mm. Mm. God has called us to rule the earth. God has seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's why we are in the war, but not of the war. Mm -hmm. So we must be in earth, on earth, but we must operate from heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now the, diff the difference between both two for me, the two for me is some are operating from heaven because mm -hmm. it's only in heaven. Okay, you need to operate from heaven on this earth mm -hmm. for you to be smiling when you're in pain. Yes. You know, there was this story of, it's a true life story, um, um, history. History tells us that there was a particular Caesar that wanted Christians, I think it was Nero, he hated Christians so much in Jerusalem. The Bible says at some point in time, he gave them up to animals, mm. to eat hungry lions, they were true Christians, hungry lions. So he now went and went to, for some of them, their heads were still intact. Mm. He now took a, 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 a walk around to see the damage. And all of them that, that were smiling. <laughs> Now, it's, it's now, now, now that's the extra oil. Hmm. We're smiling. Because you know what? You've just helped them finish well. The, you are killing the body, but the, the, the spirit, they, they have been looking, they've been looking forward to being with Jesus. So there was a supernatural ability on them. Now, that one did not come on that day. The usual problem is now we look for strength on the day of trouble. Which was one of the foolish. Uh, Virgin said, Thank you. On that day, now, on that asking, day, asking, when we asking, should have gotten your you should oil. have gotten the extra. So, mm -hmm. how do you get the extra? Mm -hmm. Number one, you must be a seeker of his face, not, not his, his hand. hand. So, can you elucidate on that? It's not about what God can give me, what about what God can give me. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, and, and a lot of times nowadays, people think that um, how prosperous you are it determines how, how, how much God, God is, is kind to you. you know? uh, so, if you are, if you are, if you are, that annoys me. It, it and it's me. such it's such a fallacy. If you're rich, that means that um, um, God is with you. That's the body if of Christ now. Yes. That's the body of Christ now. That means that God Sorry, is that's with the you. church. The yes. church is now not body of Christ. Body mm -hmm. of Christ is pure. Yes. Those are the churches now. Mm -hmm. And you think that if you're prosper, that means God. But it is not. It is and your if, money and your position that yes. determines God's goodness. God's goodness. God's goodness is not measured in 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 things we can see. 
That's it's right. terrible, so that it's, it's, it really annoys me. And it really derails a lot of Christians, and that is why a lot of Christians find them, themselves in compromising situations like what you were exactly. talking about. Because, I mean, I don't belong if everybody is saying and like, having testimonies of yeah. how God is prospering them, yeah. how God is giving them contracts, or how God is doing all this, and I don't have such testimonies. There are some testimonies I want to allow you as a pastor. I'm telling you the truth. See, when, when I was growing up as a believer, yeah, God does miracles. Mm -hmm. Healings, yes, we should testify. Testify of all goodness. I mean, let me not put it as a, thumb or a rule of the thumb. But for me, the emphasis should be what has happened to you separately, differently. Do you know when people come and even say, please, I was, I was a bad person. Mm -hmm. Somebody had just said testimony that he got a contract of $1 million. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that not only that, they paid him 75% upfront. Mm -hmm. uh, another person comes after them and says, well, me, I don't have a job yet. I don't do anything, but... I was a very terrible person. I heard the gospel of Jesus. The transformation that happened in my life, I just feel like to come and testify that the mm -hmm. power of salvation is real. Mm -hmm. this, the noise should not be much. Mm -hmm. We don't really celebrate that. Mm -hmm. That's one million. It's, in fact, they are telling the person, get out of there. <laughs> Move out of there. This is not testimony. Okay? And that shows how much the devil has gotten us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our, our front end is actually messed up. Only the mercy of the back end is sustaining us. I'm serious, and this is, please, you, you, don't measure God in in things you can't see. <laughs> don't measure God mm. in things you can't see. Mm. If God wants to bless you, your generations cannot handle it. Yes. All right? Mm. If, if God, but God did not call you to bless you. Mm. God called you to have a relationship with you, first mm. of all. Mm. All right? Mm. And bless, bless, ladies and gentlemen, the one that is even much more important are spiritual blessings. Yes. The Bible says he has blessed us with spiritual blessings in, in heavenly, heavenly places. places. That is the most important one. Mm -hmm. All these things we are seeing, shoe, bag, money, house, blah, blah, they are actually meant as, as tools to help us fulfill the purpose for which he has saved us. Mm. They are not meant to set us apart. <laughs> so that, he said, hashtag God, maybe one say God is not a tool. He said, God is a tool. No, God is, God not, is a not a tool. Mm. A seeker of his face and not his hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, please. Everything God gives you here, wife, husband, children, mm -hmm. money, job, everything physical that will not go with you to heaven mm -hmm. here is actually meant f to help you fulfill um, the purpose for which God called you. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to set you apart. Mm -hmm. You remember the Acts of the Apostles? The Bible says everybody, they had everything in common. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to set you apart. In the day of trouble, money will speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> money will not speak for you in the day of trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. Demons don't collect dollars. <laughs> you can't pay them off. Mm -mm. When death comes, you will not collect your check. Sickness, nothing. You cannot. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that hit me about two weeks ago was when the um, owner of Leicester City Football mm -hmm. Club, I mean, very tragic. Uh, we, uh, our, we extend our prayers to the, to the families. Mm -hmm and all the supporters of that club, mm -hmm. very tragic. He just watched a match mm -hmm. of a club he owned. Mm -hmm. I mean, when he was lifting up, he tell him uh, something was going to happen. When I read, I think they said it was worth was over $4 billion. Mm -hmm. Now $4 billion is, wasn't going to pay. $4 billion could have bought 20 choppers, new helicopters, all right? But $4 million, $4 billion will not pay death. Mm -hmm. Jesus. All right? And I think that's what we have to focus. So number one, we must be a seeker of his face and not his, his hand. hand please. You know, um, Psalm 25 verse 3 says, My eyes are ever towards the Lord. Towards the Lord. Your eyes must ever be towards the Lord. Whether you have Thank you, darling. Or in you and out. Have. Yes. Whether you have or you don't have. The fact that you don't have does not mean God If your good. joy is still attached to the physical things you have, you are unwise. You don't have oil. I won't lie to you. Mm -hmm. If you not having money, not having house, not having husband, is still causing you depression, uh, as a child of God, you you don't have enough wealth. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways to know. Mm -hmm. Where it is, whether you praise God or not, is a function of mm -hmm. new house, new car, good job, money, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. No. I will bless the Lord at... All times. At... All times. At... All time. It prays will sometimes all time always be in my mouth. Will continually yes. Yes. be in my mouth. Yes. Oh magnify the Lord with me. Let's exalt, exalt his name, name together. So sister, go ahead, please. You have so, a lot of points. I don't want number to. Number two, being fervent in the spirit when there is peace. 
So that means that my fervency in the spirit is not when I have troubles. Come on. So it is not when I have challenges that I begin to fast and pray. So this this buffer you are supposed to build up mm -hmm. of having extra oil mm -hmm. is actually done at the time of peace. Yes. When everything is going on well. So when there's money on the table, when there's food in the uh, in the in the pantry, when the husband is loving me, when the children are doing well. Wow. When the business is is good. Good. When everything is good, that is when I should be fervent in the spirit. So if you're a believer that you are more prayerful. Only when there's trouble. When there's trouble, mm -hmm. you don't have enough oil. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to yes, help you. Yes, because you're a reactional yeah. um, Christian. You have enough oil. Yes. You know you're reactive. Your, your relationship with God is based on happenings. Yes. Okay? You still don't have that connection. And that. If the chips come to the, if the chips come to the shove, you will deny God if enough pressure is put on you. Mm -hmm. You go and look for another solution that is not God. And come and testify in church. <laughs> that God has done this do. which a lot of people do mm -hmm. see please wrong with God have a personal relationship with God some testimonies you hear they are they have been what do you call it now edited mm -hmm. you hear the full version eh? it, it, never, it must never be mentioned in church the person will not tell you where they went to they just said God did this alright praise the Lord Hallelujah. please go ahead so, so that's point in, number two yes yeah. You're praying and you're fasting mm -hmm. when there's peace. When there's so peace. prayer and fasting is not when there's fire on the mountain. In other words, you are more intimate with God at the time when you are you feel blessed. Yes. When things things are good. And the truth is this, you can't even learn to use your weapon at the time of, of war. war. It is during the time of peace you master you it. You learn how to use your weapon. Uh -huh. You master it. So you, you declare you declare fasting not because you're asking God for anything. Just because it's time for Another God there's trouble. Fellowship with him. Or you slept and you saw a spirit of death pursuing you. <laughs> just because you know, I was asking so one young man was fasting, so that this guy was almost going to die. Because he wanted to marry. <laughs> and he didn't want to make a mistake. So I asked him a question. I said, please, before now, how how much do you fast? Have you ever fasted because you just want to know the Lord? No, I say, have you ever fasted that God will just give you one soul? You spoke to one person, God, just this soul, um, God, give me this guy. I've spoken to him already. He said, no. I said, you now want to hear God. You've never heard God before. You now want to hear God because of woman. God is a tool to you. God is a tool. We have to stop. That's what separate. And we all look good in church. But sincerely, the church is divided into half. Fools and wise folks. White folks God make us wise in Jesus. Amen. A wise man knows the reason why he's here. Mm. Fools don't know yet the reason why they are there. They just go and be the crowd. Hey. They just go and be the crowd. A, a wise man always do what they call risk assessment. Mm. What if? What if the bridegroom doesn't come in? Mm -hmm. What if God doesn't give me and this so card? If you don't plan ahead, the wise plan ahead. Is he still good? Mm -hmm. What if? Even if I don't marry. Even if I don't have children, is God still good? Even if I don't have money, uh -huh. even if we don't build that house, Our house, even if that business still does not come soon, exactly, God is still good. Hallelujah. God is still great. I will still serve Him. Please and we're talking about fervent in the spirit, prayer and fasting. Yeah. You know, I noticed something that we should begin to pray in the spirit. Now, I'm not even talking about tongues right now, but um, we should learn how to pray in the spirit. Yeah. That means that when you when you're praying, I remember then, you know, when, when we just got married, when you saw that, oh, time is, oh, yeah. wow. Okay, so praying in the spirit means praying the mind of God, basically. Yeah. You know, when God gives you a burden, you pray God's burden. You know, you pray God's heart. Praying it's in not, the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praying in tongues. When your faculty is not enriched, where, you know, a lot of people, they just want to know what they're telling God. Mm -hmm. Can't you just trust the Holy Ghost to just, Pray for you. I'm not saying it's wrong to pray in understanding, mm -hmm. but please pray more in the spirit. Mm -hmm. It builds up your build up your whole yeah, Jude, Jude, book of Jude. Yeah, build up your serving your most holy faith. Yes. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, ma'am. Then number four, don't settle for less. Hmm. What do you mean so by that? So when you say don't settle for less, you know, um Paul said something that I even uh, I think Philippians three mm -hmm. from verse eight to fourteen when he says, I press towards 
you know, the most high calling. So yeah. he never relented. He mm. always wanted to do more. Yeah. He always wanted to seek God more. Yeah. He always wanted to know God more. Yeah. Even after 25, but when you said that, yeah. he had been 25 years in the Lord. Mm. And he was still saying, I press forward. I'm pressing towards the calling. So mm. we must always want more from God. We must uh, always, yeah. you know, pray. We must never be satisfied mm. with whatever you have with God. So maybe whatever whether it's the gifts of the Spirit that you have, mm. whether it's the fruit of the Spirit, you must always ask God, God, I want more of you. Yeah. I mean, two days ago, I was praying. I said, Father, give me an appetite that is insatiable mm. for, you. for you. So we must really desire. Don't we should not settle for less. For less. We must not settle Just for less as Christians. Less. Because that was what the foolish virgins did. Yeah. They settled for just enough. Enough. I would just pray. When I mean, they said, you must pray every day. Let me just pray five minutes. Hey, let me just do let me just read my, use, uh, daily devotional. Daily devotional. And, and that's, that is all. And that's all. <laughs> and then go to church on Sunday. Yes. You know, they just settled Until for they, just, yes. I'm going to church so that at least you, you can feel right with God. <laughs> You know, not because you want to have fellowship with God. <laughs> so you don't have any time where you just okay. And um, I'm going to um, I'm have a vigil for my on my own, mm -hmm. not because it's a congregational vigil. Mm -hmm. or I'm going to declare fasting for myself, not because you know mm -hmm. um, they said we should we should fast. That is what walking in the like. path of self denial that will allow your spirit man grow and know God more. Walking in a life of self denial. Yes. And really, I mean self denial. I mean, yes. Self -denial. Because you know when the wise virgins went to buy. Yes. There's a sacrifice. You must pay a price. And at the time they went to, now look at, see, the, what those ones did when nobody was expecting that they were going to need oil is what these ones now wanted to do at the at end the, of the day. At the midnight. Because at the end of the day, you still, you still do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? For some, they would have done it at the time when it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> but you must pay a price. We must understand that there's a price to be paid. God is not cheap. Uh -uh. You must pay a price. Knowing God is not cheap. That's why he says, take up your cross. Knowing God is not cheap. Mm -hmm. Please. Knowing God is not cheap. Serving him is not. Sir, serving him with God is not cheap either. Mm -hmm. You want God, you must come after him. God wants to be wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, hashtag God wants to be wanted. He wants to be wanted. He wants to be wanted. Mm -hmm. He doesn't just want people that... He wants to be wanted. Mm -hmm. he, says, he, he says, you he shall seek me and find me. Mm -hmm. If you seek for me... Mm -hmm. Diligently, mm. you know, that was seeking is not even going to be enough. Mm. Just seeking mm. that seeking must be diligent. Mm. You know, that was you seek, you won't find, mm. you will seek, you won't find, but mm. you are still seeking. Mm. That's what diligence means. You, mm. you keep failing. Mm. Diligence is the, is the tenacity you need against failure. Mm. So you are saying, No, okay, I didn't, I didn't get this this time. Mm -hmm. I followed, I went two, three days, I fasted. God didn't talk to me again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I will not do the next one. Mm -hmm. So you go again, another two, three days. What have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. Then you still go, then you go again, or you stay there for two days. God did not say what. Then you now pack it up. You now say, Well, no, 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 no. He, are you, are you thirsty enough? See, if somebody tells you, Come every day for two years, mm -hmm. every day to my office, stay from 5 a.m to 5 p.m. Mm. Uh, on the second on the second year of doing that every year, mm -hmm. I'll give you $10 million. Mm -hmm. Bros, you all of us will be competing for that place. <laughs> that's the truth. You that's will, the truth. you will, you will. Oh, that's the you, truth. You will, you will be there every day. And even, even the Bible talks about that tenacity, yeah. you know, in the book of, I think it's in the book of Luke, yeah. that it says that if your best friend comes, Luke 11, yeah. verse 5, so if your best friend comes at midnight yeah. and asks you for loaves for his friend, yeah. you know, that even though you will not even come, but because of that... He will refuse to go. Yes. He won't so, be able to sleep. We must be tenacious for that extra oil. Yeah. You must be a tenacious Christian, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. taking no for an answer, mm -hmm. being diligent to keep on seeking help. Yeah. And I, I, I said something, I said, you must leave a lifestyle of love. A lifestyle of love. Okay. How does that please? Explain yes. that please. How does that you come? You see, the, the thing is, when you live a lifestyle of love, yeah. because the Bible says God is love, mm -hmm. the things that matter to God matter to you. Mm -hmm. So the things that God says that because I should... Because God is love. Because God is love. So the things... The, because I found out that there are a lot of Christians that profess to be Christians and, you know, they, 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 they read the Bible and they speak in tongues and they do all, but they don't walk in love. Jesus asked Peter this question. He said, do you love me? He said, feed my sheep. So if I love God, I walk in love. I would mm -hmm. do his bidding. I would feed his sheep. I would love what he loves. Yes. And I would and hate, hate what, what he, he hates. hates. 
So that means So you that can't be living in sin and you say you love God. No. It says right. can we continue seeing that grace by If you love me, keep my commandments. Simple. Yes. It's as simple as that. So we must live a lifestyle of love. Love. Loving what God loves. Yeah. So if God says I love this one, you're not to judge somebody. Mm-hmm. You're not to discard anybody. Yeah. You're not to make anybody feel less than they are. Yes. You're not to let anybody Or they're not the same social standing. So standing as we are you not are. at the same level. Even in church, mm-hmm. <laughs> even where we sit, the, is determined by the levels now. No, it's terrible. <laughs> you know how much I hate this thing. I mean, it's, I mean, those days we're all brothers. Um, we want to use our brothers that had big cars then. When it's time for crusade, we use those big cars to carry chairs. Those guys knew it was all anything for Jesus goes. But now, oh, 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 we want to show the other... To God be the glory. Amen. And then also being involved in kingdom business. Yeah. So being involved in kingdom business, I mean, helping to propagate the gospel. Mm-hmm. You know, and you going to preach the gospel. Yeah. Um, That's what a lot of people don't do anymore yes. now. Yes. Evangelism. Personal evangelism. Mm-hmm. See, a giving offering in church is not it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. Let me not say it's not it. Any other thing you do does not still pay for God's bounces testify. Mm-hmm. We need to go into the whole world and teach the nations. Mm. Anybody you meet, teach the nation doesn't necessarily mean you go to different nations. For some, it might be literal. Mm. For others, that I'm going to bring lots of people, different races and mm. of any background around you. Okay, make sure you feed them. Mm. I think we have to wrap up here now. Instagram is up. Oh, Instagram is up. All right, then. So, could you just say what? Um, all the um, uh, school of ministry students. We are starting this weekend. Mm. You should receive a mail between now and Thursday, by God's grace. Um, God bless you. Everything is set. I want to say a word of prayer. You do, Danny. And Father, we thank you so much for today. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Everyone that I've heard today, whose who's, who's, who's lamps are full of oil, but they lack extras. And Father, I pray that, Lord, you provoke their hearts to seek the extra. Mm-hmm. Father, Lord, the extra means they're going to spend extra time with you much more than they have. They will seek for you uh, much more than they have. I pray God Almighty that the yearning from you will overwhelm them. Lord, you dig a well in them, Lord God Almighty, an insertive one to keep longing for you. We thank you, Father. Keep us to the very end. Make us useful in your hands. In Jesus' name. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll come your way again next week. This is PK and Bolly Bob's Bola Olawale saying we love you. We love you. And God loves you much more. Yes, and God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen.